Cyberspace. My name is Garrett Mills and welcome to a new series that I'm starting. Um, in this series we're going to be taking a look at developing a Minecraft mod for Minecraft version 1.7.10 and we're going to walk through using Forge to create a mod and look at creating different blocks, items, handlers, all kinds of different things. So in this video we're going to walk through setting up the environment. Now I'm using Ubuntu Linux However, because Minecraft is developed in Java, and Java runs on Linux, Windows, and Mac, um, all of the development is going to be the same across all three platforms, and the setup of the environment is basically the same on all three platforms, but I'll be careful to note out uh, where, if anywhere, there are any differences that you need to be aware of. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and get started setting up the environment. So, as I mentioned, Minecraft is developed and runs in Java, and so does our development environment. So that means the first thing you're going to need is Java. So on Mac and Windows, you can go to this uh, java.com link, which I'll have linked in the description, and download the version of Java that corresponds to your operating system, and install it like you would any other program. That will um, get the command line version of Java running for you. You want the JDK. Um, for development, so that will be linked in the description. However, for Linux users, we can install OpenJDK by the command line. It's just a little cleaner, nicer, and easier to maintain. So on Ubuntu, you're going to want to run sudo apt-get install OpenJDK version 8 JDK. Yes. Enter our password and it's going to go download and install the OpenJDK version 8. Alright, so if you're on Windows or Mac, once you finish running the installer, or if you're on Linux, once that command finishes running, you should now be able to run the command java-version, no matter what operating system you're on, and you should see something similar to this. You should see the name of the version of Java you installed, so maybe it's Oracle Java Runtime or whatever and then some version, preferably 1.8, because at the time of this video, that's the latest version that's out. So after we've got Java installed, the next thing to install is our IDE. The IDE is where you're gonna write all your code for your mod, and it um, bootstraps or sets up your mod code and allows you to run it in game, so you can test blocks or mechanics that you add into the game. So a very popular Java IDE um, is called Eclipse. This is... Um, it's free and open source, and I will have the downloads page linked in the description. You're going to want to make sure that the release is for whatever operating system you're using. Scroll down to Eclipse IDE for Java developers, not Java EE developers. And then hit download for whatever CPU architecture you have. So once it's done downloading, in Mac and Windows, you can just run the installer and it'll install it to the default folder and you can launch it from there. But in Linux, um, it just gives us the installed folder, so we just have to extract it to somewhere. So I'm going to put this in my Documents folder. I'm going to put it in my Documents folder. And then if we go to my documents I can check and see it's in this Eclipse folder so now I can launch it by changing directories into documents slash Eclipse and running dot slash Eclipse and that will launch Eclipse Neon so as a little side note in Linux um, you might have noticed I had to go to the command line to launch this now that we've got it launched once I can hit add to dash and lock it to my launcher and now I can just hit it from here instead of having to go so once Eclipse loads it's going to give you this selected directory as a workspace since we haven't set up Forge yet we don't need um, to actually start the IDE so we can just go ahead and close Eclipse for now the next thing that we're going to need to do is download Forge now, Forge, if you're not familiar with it, is the um, utility kit that allows Minecraft mods to be developed. It's a standard library that gives you access to the Minecraft API with just a little bit uh, easier of a workflow, and it handles the loading of Minecraft mods, and it's very popular. So we need to download the source and set it up. So we need to go to files.minecraftforge.net, and I'll have this linked in the description. 
we're going to go to 1.7 and hit 1.7.10 and then download the latest SRC version. Wait for the obligatory ad fly page. And download it. Now once it downloads, we can open this up and you see we've got some folders and files in here. This is going to be our development environment. So we want to extract it to a place where we keep all of our code. So I keep all of my code in my documents folder. So in here I'm going to want to make a folder called modding or something to that effect. It doesn't really matter. Then we're going to just make a test folder for our mod. So tutorial mod. Now inside here we hit extract and it's going to extract uh, those files to our tutorial mod folder. Now that we've done that we can go ahead and set up um, the Forge workspace because just like just like a Minecraft launcher has to download Minecraft when you run it the Forge environment doesn't come with all the Minecraft files it has to download them um, when you set it up. So from my documents folder I can CD into the modding and then the tutorial mod folder and I want to run Gradle W and this command works on all platforms, Windows, Mac, and Linux. I want to run Gradle W, setup, decomp, workspace. What this command is going to do is it's going to go download um, the Gradle loader and it's going to go download the Minecraft source and it's going to decompile it and set it up for um, development. So this command will take a little bit uh, to run because it's got to download all the source and it's got to decompile and set it up. So it may take anywhere between 10 and 30 minutes. So once that command finishes it will have downloaded, extracted, decompiled, and set up all of the Minecraft files necessary to develop and run Minecraft in our development environment. However the next thing we need to do is run the Gradle command that's going to set up um, set up our environment for Eclipse so Eclipse knows where to find all those files. So that command we can run by running dot slash Gradle W Eclipse. So that's going to download the Minecraft launchers and set up our environment so that we can launch Eclipse and Eclipse will recognize that it's a Minecraft environment. So once those two commands are done, we can go ahead and launch Eclipse again. And then once it pops up this workspace uh, dialog, we want to go to our modding folder and the mod folder and then we want to click the Eclipse folder this is where we want um, Eclipse to load our environment from. Then hit OK and Eclipse is going to um, load some assets and it should start up the Eclipse IDE and we should see um, that it comes pre-configured with all of the Minecraft environment setup. So if we look over here in our package explorer we see Minecraft and if we expand this we see source main Java and source main resources. Um, this is what you want to see. If you don't see source main Java and source main resources, make sure you've run the Gradle W Eclipse command and the Gradle W um, setup decomp workspace and that your Eclipse workspace is pointed to the Eclipse folder inside your mod, uh, inside your mod development folder. So the, um, our environment is basically set up now. We can just test and make sure that we can um, load the Minecraft launcher by hitting this play button up here and what we should see is um, some scrolling log output show up here and Minecraft 1.7.10 should launch to the title screen. So once this launches to the title screen, if you see it's 1.7.10 and it is running Minecraft Forge, you should see four mods loaded, four mods active. One of those is the example mod that comes with um, the Forge environment, but we will uh, take care of that in the next episode. So once you see Minecraft launching, you can go ahead and hit quick game and close Eclipse, and you've successfully set up the environment and IDE necessary to begin developing Minecraft mods um, in Minecraft Forge. Alright guys, thanks for watching this first episode in my new tutorial for developing Minecraft mods in Minecraft 1.7.10. 
Um, as usual, I'll be down in comments. So if you have any problems and you need help that you need help with, or if you've got concerns, questions, or if you want to showcase something that you've built, I would love to see it. Um, so I'll be down there. Uh, be sure to connect with me on Twitter, on Google Plus, via email, on my blog, and uh, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the next episode in this series, which is coming soon, or any of my other series on development um, or development environments. And uh, as always, thanks for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.